A while back, the big bore kit on this got destroyed. I rebuilt it as a factory size engine. Here's why. Okay, number one, it vibrated. The 250cc engine is set up and balanced really nice. It doesn't vibrate hardly at all. That 305 kit makes it vibrate a lot worse, especially on the highway, um, you know, highway speeds. I'm honestly surprised I forgot how bad it vibrated. I put this back to a 250cc engine and it is smooth and it's nice and it's gonna stay this way. Uh, number two, reduced fuel economy. I can push this 250cc engine as hard as I want you know, wide open throttle down gravel roads, ripping up and down roads like this, 47 miles to a gallon is the least amount of fuel mileage I've gotten out of it. A big bore kit, if I'd really push it, I'd get like 30. You know, going, going easy down the road, 45, 50 miles an hour, some stretches of 60 miles an hour, you know, this and county blacktops. 250cc engine will get 70, 75 miles to a gallon. That big bore kit would only ever do 45 or 50. And you know, people think, well, why does that matter? I just want power. Well, my next point, there's not that much more power. Way low down power, off the line power is where that big bore kit makes extra power. On the highway, it doesn't make any difference. You know, you might not have to shift down into fifth gear for some hills, but really it's such a little amount of difference. Um, you know, first and second gear, you take off faster, you shred your rear tires faster, you know, rooster tails around corners are a little, a little more fun, but, you know, you can slap the clutch and get this thing to go around corners and throw up all kinds of, of rooster tails, too. Um, driving out and stuff like this, you know, hopping logs, doing wheelies, that's a skill thing. The power's not going to help you be a better rider. So doing that kind of stuff, it makes no difference. Uh, so... Another factor is the time and money it takes to do it. I don't think it's worth it. I honestly don't. If I could go back, I would not do this big bore kit. It, to me, it just wasn't worth it. It didn't make that much more power. It killed the fuel economy, and it was much less reliable. I only got 8,000 miles out of that B&B cycle restoration big bore kit before I had to put it back. And every time you change that stuff, it's gaskets and fluids and o-rings and time if you can do it yourself if you can't then there's labor costs so i'm going to keep it a stock engine i never hear about stock engines failing other than you know there were a handful of cam chain tensioner issues but that was very specific numbers honda didn't even have a recall for it so it must not have been that big of a problem it's always these big bore kit engines that fail I was lucky and only ruined the big bore kit. I didn't take out any valves or anything, so I, I kept my factory components and put them back on. If you sent your cylinder in for a core exchange, well, you're kind of screwed. Now you're going to have to buy another cylinder. So I'm keeping my bike a stock engine. I would not do the big bore kit again. And just so you know, um, I have a video on it, but I had a B&B &B cycle restoration big bore kit. I got it from CRFs only. I don't blame B&B &B or CRFs only for how it failed. I blame JE Pistons because um, the JE Piston top compression ring failed and took it out. And you know, when you do these big bore kits, it makes them way over square. You can Google over square engine and learn about that. But the, the skirt on the piston was a lot smaller, so it does this little rocking motion as it goes up and down. It's gonna wear out faster. And just so you know, I've been a mechanic for over a decade. I know what I'm doing. I've got, you know, I've done this engine a couple of times. I have a wide band air fuel ratio meter and fuel controller in here. So it was nothing I did that caused it to fail prematurely. So that's what happened with it. That's what I think. I wouldn't ever do it again, but you do you, you know. Thanks for watching.